SpaceX makes Starship 11 magically disappear, but don't worry, it will reappear as SN15 soon enough. Inspiration 4's remaining crew members have been named, and dates have been set for multiple missions. Another Starlink launch is less than a week away, and Virgin Galactic is today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Let's start the show with some nerd drama. The week began with a scrubbed Starship launch on Monday due to an FAA inspector being unable to reach Starbase Texas in time, according to a tweet by Elon, further catalyzing the slightly turbulent relationship the company has with the federal agency. And following up with another twat that it would be great to have a permanent FAA inspector on site or possibly just have one Skype in with access to full telemetry. A person familiar with the situation said that the inspector was in Starbase last week, waiting for Starship to fly, but SpaceX told him that it wouldn't fly until Monday, or maybe even not at all this week because they were having trouble getting the needed road closures with Cameron County. So he returned home to Florida, and then on Sunday, SpaceX got their needed closures and told the inspector to come back for Monday's launch. But the FAA dude didn't see the email, and SpaceX couldn't get a hold of the officials until late Sunday night, and by then it was too late. The agency put out a statement demanding SpaceX provide adequate notice of its launch schedule, clearly not fully grasping the situation, that Starship is in its testing phase, and that SpaceX, for one, isn't there to just sit around and collect a tax-funded paycheck. They actually have shit to build, customers to satisfy, and jobs to create. So if the FAA is going to demand they babysit every Starship launch, then best they find someone to move down there and park an RV nearby, you know, like SpaceX employees do. Or just pitch a tent, like I do, every time I see Starship. Not to be a patriotic stickler, but the agency is now literally slowing down American innovation and limiting our American freedom. Our freedom to watch cool rockets explode without a heavy veil of fog in the way. Gaw! So on Tuesday, the FAA chap was there to do what supervisors do, nothing. And so SpaceX said, screw the fog, let's just launch before this guy leaves on his government allocated brunch break. And launch Starship did, reaching 10 clicks before briefly hovering on one engine, then flopping over onto its belly, like a stainless steel whale with a deadly amount of airtime. Once back down in the fog, at least one engine lit for the landing flip maneuver, but things quickly took a turn for the worst, or the better if you have a thing for rocket confetti, when the rocket activated its flight termination system and made it rain all over the landing pad. And elsewhere, actually, because apparently debris has been found more than five miles away. Cameron County even updated their website with a debris hotline to call if you found any in your backyard. I checked, even though I live 1,500 miles away, but all I found was dog poop. Remnants of a different kind of explosion. Exciting nonetheless. At least the crater is in the right place, twatted Elon. Barely a scratch. He's so modest. Back on the stand soon. We'll report conclusions as soon as we know them. And while we still don't have all the deets, he did write that Engine 2 may have had issues on ascent and didn't reach operating chamber pressure during landing burn. Something significant happened shortly after the landing burn started, should know what it was once we examine the bits later today. Also, a high production rate of Starship solves many ills. And that's what makes these tests so great. No matter the outcome, we know that we won't have to wait six months to a year for the next major test. Because of this high production rate, we can look forward to the next one, SN15, rolling to the launch pad any day now. It has hundreds of design improvements across structures, avionics, software, and engines. Hopefully one of those improvements covers this problem. If not, then Retrofit will add a few more days. The rocket did receive its fins this week. We're just waiting on final nose cone integration, which may happen today. Elon's pumped to use their new crane for it. A different nose cone has been stacked and placed inside some kind of steel brace. Do with that information what you will. Obviously what we're seeing are those design improvements taking shape that Elon was talking about. The next major technology revolution is at SN20. Those ships will be orbit capable with heat shield and stage separation systems. We'll probably ascend to Apogee successfully. However, we'll also probably need many attempts surviving re-entry going Mach 25 and landing of course. For orbit, Starship will need to be stacked upon its super heavy booster. Shown here with Elon's baby mama, not this baby, his other baby. BN1 has been built and is the manufacturing pathfinder. SpaceX has already learned a lot and it sounds like they are ready to scrap it. They've implemented design changes now for BN2. The goal is to get it on an orbital path before the end of this month, maybe even orbit capable if they're lucky. Like I said earlier, they aren't messing around down there in Starbase. Things are moving quickly. So quickly that Elon wants you and all your friend to consider moving there immediately. SpaceX is growing their army of engineers, technicians, builders, and essential support personnel. 
The place will grow by several thousand people over the next year or two, and he is donating $20 million to Cameron County Schools and $10 million to the city of Brownsville for downtown revitalization. More details coming next week. He's also hoping to bore tunnels in the area and wants to use solar and wind to power the city. The lawyer wife's excited about it. She's packing my bags right now. Moving on now to Dragon News, the updated date for the launch of SpaceX's third man mission, Crew-2, is now Earth Day, April 22nd. Crew-1 is targeting a return on the 28th. And Inspiration4, the first all-private passenger mission, is slated for September. A few days ago, they announced the winners of the two remaining seats aboard the Crew Dragon capsule. Dr. Cyan Proctor won the Prosperity seat through Shift 4 payments, and Chris Sambrowski won the Generosity raffle by donating to St. Jude's. Actually, his friend won it, but couldn't go, so Chris was recommended in his place, and now Chris is going to space. You know, though, if you wanted to be really generous, you would give his ticket to me, and I would generously accept. But Inspiration Force capsule isn't theirs yet. It currently belongs to Crew-1 and is presently docked to the space station. When it returns for refurbishment, it will also be outfitted with a new cupola window in place of a docking port. So don't forget to pack the Windex. The crew's three-day mission will take them on an orbital joy ride to an altitude reaching 540 kilometers, much higher than the space station in an apogee that hasn't been reached since 2009. And finally, a Starlink launch is scheduled for next week. SpaceX will be deploying their 24th flock of satellites on April 7th at 12.34 p.m. Eastern Time. But now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. This week, Virgin Galactic revealed their new spaceship, the VSS Imagine, the first of their Spaceship 3 designs. Unlike its predecessor, the VSS Unity, a Spaceship 2 design, it has a reflective exterior that provides thermal protection and a more appealing look. This newer version can also be built more efficiently and weighs less, so instead of four passengers, it can now seat six. However, the show's not over for Unity. Her next flight is slated for May, and Imagine's test flights are expected to begin this summer. That's all I have for you guys today. And thank you for tuning in, and thank you eccentric members and patrons for your support of these videos. The rest of you can feel free to join us at any time, or simply subscribe and boink that like button. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.